I had about four or five girls in my friend group, mostly Muslim, and three of them identified as bisexual. And I just sort of ignored it because I didn't really want to lose friends. One of them even had a boyfriend. Then when she broke up with him, she became non-binary and pansexual. Muslim boys would even come to school and wear makeup, then take it off at the end of the day when they went home. They called me haram police and boring because I didn't like joining in with the conversations. This was quite traumatic for me and led to nightmares. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu salam ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome all viewers. So one goal of this channel is to expose deviant ideologies to the masses. Because the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, he taught us that there is the straight path of Allah, the straight path of Islam, but then you have other paths that deviate from the straight path. And those other paths, they have shayateen calling to them. And these astray paths, anything that breaks off from as-sirat al-mustaqim, it leads to the hellfire. And this has been the situation of the human being throughout history. There's nothing unique to us in our time regarding this foundational fact. However, the specific details regarding what those astray ideologies might entail might vary from place to place, from time to time. But the main point to always keep in mind is that regardless of the deviation, regardless of the details of that misguidance, we have to try to stick to the straight path of Islam. And one thing I especially like to focus on is what's going on in public school to lead our youth astray. These are things that we might not be aware of because we are not sitting with them in school. So today I want to share an email that was submitted by a sister who is currently in school and she's giving us some insight as to what is going on. But right before we get into the email, I want to remind us that when we enjoin good, when we call people to the truth, when we try to walk the straight path ourselves, it requires a lot of patience because the straight path is one, but misguided paths are many. And when you expose misguided paths, people who are on those paths can get triggered. They can try to attack you because there is a disease in their hearts. Instead of fully submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and accepting the truth, whatever it is, there are certain aspects of the truth that they don't like. There are certain things that contradict Islam that they love. Therefore, when somebody speaks the truth, there are those who are going to straight up deny it because they have preferred certain isms, certain other ideologies and philosophies and ways of life to the truth of Islam. But what you also have are Muslims who have been infected with the desire to follow other paths. But instead of acknowledging that they have shortcomings, instead of admitting to themselves that there are just certain aspects of this ism or that ism that contradicts Islam, that just it appeals to them deep down and that the problem is with them and it's something that they need to work on. Instead, unfortunately, what some people do is they try to change Islam and say, no, actually, these things are from Islam. So then instead of repenting and working on themselves, they double down and triple down and quadruple down. And over time, this just leads people further and further and further astray. So the best thing that we can do when presented the truth is accept the truth for what it is. If we have shortcomings, if we struggle to put Islam first, if we find it difficult to cleanse ourselves of certain ideological diseases, then the very least we can do is properly diagnose ourselves, admit to ourselves that we have these shortcomings, and ask Allah to heal us, ask Allah to guide us. Because by changing the religion or preferring something else openly over the religion only leads to the hellfire. So may Allah keep all of us firm and may Allah give all of us a good end on the straight path of Islam. And without further ado, I'd like to share an email that a sister was kind enough to send in. She says, Assalamu alaikum, brother Sajid. My mom's sister and I have been listening to your series on LGBT behavior being promoted in public schools. I live in the UK and I was in secondary school. I still had one and a half years of school remaining before our exams at 16 years old. However, I chose to leave school early and become home educated because of my experience, which is similar to the stories you have posted about. Even though my school is a public school and was basically 95% Muslim, and a lot of the teachers were Muslim too, but the agenda somehow still took hold of a lot of the students. I was always labeled a homophobe, even when I was just in year seven, which is around age 11 because I never agreed with men putting on makeup or just the LGBT in general. I used to even say to one of the girls, what about the story of Prophet Lut alayhi salam? And she just said that she respected them, 
the LGBT, and that she didn't care. So anyway, after lockdown last year when I went back to school, it was like everyone's attitudes changed. I had about four or five girls in my friend group, mostly Muslim, and three of them identified as bisexual. And I just sort of ignored it because I didn't really want to lose friends. One of them even had a boyfriend. Then when she broke up with him, she became non-binary and pansexual. They used to talk about explicit things all the time and it's like there was nothing else for them to talk about except that and things related to LGBT. Some of them used to send me posts about how the LGBT are good people and one even sent me a post that said, I'm a sinner and I don't care. I still just ignored it. They never used to look at teachers with respect or just normally. They used to look at them and comment about them sexually, whether they were male or female. They would talk about haram acts that aren't meant to be talked about openly. And they would talk about it proudly and shamelessly. I stayed quiet when they talked about it, so they called me haram police and boring because I didn't like joining in with the conversations. I do have to say that I'm not a perfect Muslim and I'm still very much working on my deen, but this just really affected me negatively. First, they just joked about it. Then they seriously talked about it. Then they tried encouraging and pushing everything onto me. They talked about explicit things in so much detail, it was so hard to listen to. They even made a group chat on social media just dedicated to sending explicit videos and things to each other. And they added me to it even when I asked them not to. It got so bad that they even tried to do things to me and they did actually do one thing to me three days in a row at lunchtime and it was really humiliating. I dreaded school so much and I used to exaggerate being ill to my mom so that she'd let me off school and I didn't have to go in that day, but I knew I wasn't going to be able to stay at home forever. I hated going to school so much because I already knew what was going to happen. But one day they tried talking about something so disgusting, so graphic, and they even tried to push it on to me. I just felt grossed out and I didn't want to go to school anymore. The day after that, I absolutely dreaded going into school, so I told my mom that I had a stomach ache so she would let me off. She said that I had missed too much school recently and that I had to go. So I went upstairs and got changed, but I just felt so upset inside and I just could not go on. So I went to my mom and I told her everything that happened. I just broke down in front of her and told her everything and that I didn't want to go to school anymore and I wanted to stay at home to be safe from everything. Alhamdulillah, she took me out of school and I didn't have to go a day after that and I just deleted all my social media and basically disappeared to them. This was quite traumatic for me and led to nightmares, but alhamdulillah, they have stopped now. Please continue to warn viewers to be aware that this ideology is literally infiltrating innocent minds everywhere. Muslim boys would even come to school and wear makeup, then take it off at the end of the day when they went home. They also openly began to display that lifestyle. I just hope and pray that my friends realize their mistake and choose to turn away from that path. I don't know what the solution is to this, but I hope that somehow these words will help even one person stop going down that route. And the sister recently sent me a follow-up email saying, I've just found out that two of the girls in my friend group started dating each other. May Allah guide them. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the sister who shared this email. May Allah keep her firm, guide her, and protect her. One thing I want to emphasize is the situation that many parents are putting their children in. What this sister went through was traumatic. She started having nightmares. She would tell her parents that she was sick just so that she could stay home. And why were things made so difficult for her? Simply because she wanted to remain on the straight path of Islam. She even says herself that she wasn't a perfect Muslim. She was very much working on her deen herself. However, just because she wouldn't openly participate in all of this evil that was going on around her, she was ridiculed. She was called the haram police. She was called boring. But alhamdulillah, we see that she made it through. She's holding firm onto her deen. Whereas these other people, they're changing their identities. They're getting into haram relationships. You got girls dating each other. You got boys wearing makeup. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep the sister firm, grant her the best of both worlds. And parents, please understand where you're sending your kids. This isn't just a Muslim problem. Kids are losing their minds because the ones who are supposed to be teaching them are forcing them into these unhealthy, traumatizing, misguided environments. We are shepherds and we are responsible for our flocks. Our children have rights over us. Allah is going to ask us whether or not we fulfilled their rights, whether or not we protected our flocks. Allah tells us, do people think that they will be left alone because they say we believe and will not be tested? But we indeed tested those who were before them. And Allah will certainly make it known the truth of those who are true 
and will certainly make it known the falsehood of those who are liars. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us firm on the straight path. May Allah protect us from ever, ever, ever going astray. May Allah keep all of our children and our offspring on the straight path. And may Allah guide all of us to Jannah. Allah knows best. Thank you for watching. Jazakum Allahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.